salutations. My name is Campbell the Magnificent, and I'm going to be talking to you all about peace. So, my project was a simulation to raise awareness about peace, which does sound a bit corny, but I believe it was a very important thing. So, it took me a long time to find a reasonable format for it, one that would not only be seen by people, but also felt by people. So at first I decided to make a book. I would write a long book about peace that everyone would read, and they would connect to it. Then I realized no one really reads books very much anymore. <laughs> so then I decided to make a movie or a short skit. But that wouldn't really convey the decision-making involved or connected to people, especially if they disagreed with the method chosen to achieve peace. So then I decided to make a video game module, one where you, the PC, could choose from a myriad of choices the way to find world peace in my war-torn world of Iavalar. Now, in Iavalar, the big idea is world peace. A big idea is the thing that makes the world spin, the clock tick, the sun crawl across the sky. It's the thing that causes all large-scale events. So, in our world, the big idea for a really long time was religion swiftly followed by money, at which stage it remains to this day. <laughs> as long as I believe the world is spun by money, we can never achieve a perfect peace. So, in my module, titled Tide of Death, <laughs> you can explore the world and be a part of the dominant belief system in place that won the last four great world wars, which were also caused by the idea of achieving world peace. <laughs> so, big ideas, as you can see, are always big abstract ideas that no one can really act upon because they're big and they all, people always think they're small. So, on the World Wars, the group that won the last Great World War in my module was called the Church of Adrius, who, with their Templar-esque order, stamped out all opposition and ruled the world through fear, believing that peace had been attained due to the lack of conflict and war. And that method is called Peace by Fear which I think we can all agree is not the happiest of solutions. <laughs> so, as you log on to the module, you are a part of this order at the very beginning. And you do what your master tells you to, until, after a time, you commit some less than savory deeds, which you can disagree with, or you cannot disagree with. And if you disagree with them, you are offered the opportunity to leave the order and flee to the wilds, where they have no reach. There, you just live and do what you want for a while, and after a time, you may revisit the idea of peace in the form of an extinct order wiped out by this order of Adrius 500 years previously. They believed that you should always protect the weak, not the innocent, the weak. They believed that no one can truly be innocent in Iavalar. By simply existing, you would make another person suffer, and that the inevitable conclusion of that would be death and war. So, they believed that if they protected the majority of people in the conflicts, the people of Iavalar would remain an existing populace and would never be completely wiped out. So they decided to simply protect everyone. Another, the sages of the Wilderwood, believed that if they created in their own small community happiness and peace. They would expel a wave of calmness and peace and happiness to all the other communities around them, thereby creating a ripple effect throughout the world that would unite everyone as a happy populace. Another, the Stone Mountain clans, believed that if they killed everyone who opposed them, they would have achieved peace. <laughs> that method is called peace through strength and can be traced back in our world to the Roman Emperor Hadrian. Now, this method, of course, does not actually work very well, <laughs> because you can never truly stamp out everyone because there's not enough people on your side. So, after a time, in my module, after exploring and revisiting all these different ideas, you can eventually come to the conclusion that peace is really hard to find. 
and that as long as a single person disagrees with your method, your method of peace won't happen. So, in Egyptian mythology, the great god Ptah once said, I have set thy fear in every country, thy fear encircles the mountains, and the chiefs tremble at the mention of thee. They come to thee, crying out together to crave peace from thee. This, so elegantly put, means that the strong and powerful beget fear in those around them, thereby causing all of them to seek peace with the powerful to avoid destruction or a more sinister agenda to claim that power for themselves. In Iaflar, this is an overarching theme. People are powerful and someone else is weak. The weak try to become powerful so that they are no longer afraid. But as they become powerful, they cause everyone else around them to also be afraid. And that makes the weak and afraid also strive to become powerful. And when everyone becomes too powerful, people decide, hey, wait a minute, that person's dangerous. <laughs> so then they decide to eliminate their opposition, thereby causing another great world war. <laughs> so, how does that work? Really simply, it doesn't. When people get more and more powerful, causing other people around them to become afraid, everyone decides that the only solution to that is violence. And the people who decide not to be violent are usually crushed by the people who decide to be violent. So, that then decide, becomes a self-replicating cycle with people killing each other and trying to end each other. In my module, later on in the campaign, if you don't die, you eventually uncover a man named Tide from his eternal prison. So, earlier on in the story, it's foreshadowed that a single individual caused the last great world war. This individual, as you learn, was Tide, and he instigated the last great world war with the intent to take over the world. Now, after the conversation with him, you can either instigate the conf conflict to stop him, or you can leave him be. Of course, if you leave him be, then the world just ends. So, you instigate the conflict to stop him. That then leads to him just teleporting away, because he can. <laughs> and then you try to chase him down. Then you will find an old book in an ancient library on your way to find him, which I wrote, that dictates the workings of peace from a single perspective that peace is inherently flawed. As I said earlier, if one person opposes you, you can't get it. So, I proposed that whereas peace is the absence of conflict, maybe even the pursuit of a non-combative solution, a perfect peace is a world where instead of avoiding knocking each other down, people lift other people who fall down up regardless of race, gender, or any preconditions. Then, after finding this book, and being introduced to another philosophy of the many that I introduced in the story, you continue to hunt him down and find an ancient temple where you find a book written by him along with three other people throughout history. We all wrote it at different points in time, trying to find out how to achieve peace. The first group believed peace is impossible, can't be found, you should give up and go home. <laughs> the second person said, no, we shouldn't give up and go home. We should try to make everyone happy to the best of our abilities. And another person said that they were consumed by vengeance and killed lots of people and that peace was eventually attained in their community due to the lack of conflict. And the fourth, Tide, concluded that as long as there are enemies, there will always be conflict and war. And as long as there is a winner, there is also a loser who will then try to strike back against the winner at a later point in time. So, he concluded that the only way to achieve a permanent was if one enemy was defeated soundly by everyone else. So, that contradicts his previous statement of taking over the world, revealing that his goal was not to take over the world, but to unite everyone against him. 
in one last great world war where he would fight them until they were united as one people and then he would lose and they would stay forever together as one peaceful community. You can confront, confront him about this later on. And it will end with him asking you to either stand aside and let him work, or else. <laughs> so, if you decide that you need to stand against him, you combat him. However, if you understand his standpoint, you would understand that him having someone support him contradicts his entire mission statement. If he has a supporter and he loses, his supporter will take his place, thereby continuing the cycle of war. So it has to be one enemy defeated. So if you decide to join him, he would be the one to attempt to crush you. Time. And then, if you decided to keep fighting, you would instigate the conflict, combat him for a really long time, and then you would either win, during which he would talk to you about how you would want to achieve peace. And you were provided with 13 different options that I got by asking members of our community. So, there are so many different options, and I don't have the time to say them all and explain them all. So, I'll just conclude that my world is not, in fact, a metaphysical representation of our own. It's my attempt at creating my own form of world peace by making everyone else more aware that you are not the only person with an idea. Everyone else has an idea as well, and their ideas have equal merit to, to your own, and that their ideas might even be better. And I'm certainly not the first person to think about this, and I'm not the wisest of the people who have. But I think that perfect peace can only be found if first everyone believes it will happen, followed by everyone wanting it to happen. Then, and only then, will we be able to achieve a perfect peace. Thank you.